like uh, you're you're in the army and you're going to Iraq and I'm like okay because uh, <laughs> because you told me to drill sergeant you know like. <laughs> What is up guys, Joe here, coming at you today with a special piece. I get brutally honest, answer all kinds of crazy questions with brutal raids. Stay tuned. Brutus here, bringing you a brutally honest. And we have, uh, as you can tell from the title of the video, I have none other than uh, Joe, Clash with Joe. What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Good. I'm really glad that you took time out of your busy day because you covered the CWO invite stuff. So, I, I mean, there's no lie in saying that you had a busy day. How, how was your day going on covering that stuff? Uh, well, we're uh, currently covering the light uh, league, giving those guys some love over there. And I am currently 11 of the 16 wars down, man. That's a, that's a lot of work in just one day. You got all those all those that images and stuff for the video uh, for the recap. Yeah, yeah, I got to go through and do all the overlays after I get all the content. So once I get all the you know stats and everything, then I'll go back and do the overlays for the video itself. Yeah, it's a, you know not so many people uh, know that this amount of work goes into making all these videos. You know, a lot of people think that you could just grab a free sc a screen recorder and then just put a video up there and then now hey look you make videos. You know, so I, that's a lot of work of what you just said. <laughs> No, everybody, yeah, people think that it's, you know, easy to go get an AZ recorder for Google or something like that and, you know, throw a video up and, and call it a day and expect to get, you know, super huge overnight. It's crazy. It really is, because I know you've been doing this for well over a year, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, and before we uh, get into the channel, because that's one topic I want to get through, um, I wanted to start, you know, just with who you are as a person. And there's one question I think you know I'm going to ask because I was... When you told me what your name was, I freaked out. So the first thing is, um, why is your in-game name, or not in-game name, channel name, Clash with Joe? Why don't we start with that? <laughs> oh, man. So Is your name Joe? That's what I want to know. No, no. My, my actual name is Kenny, actually. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> yeah, it's actually funny because... Um, you know, I'm in the army, so and I've been in 12 years, you know, and my last name, you know, actually starts with Joe. So, uh, you know, being in so long, I got so used to being called Joe that this, you know, the, the YouTube thing was just easy. Um, you know, Clash Attacks with Joe and Clash Attacks really just came because I was trying not to do, you know, the clash or clashing with, you know, so. Yeah, there's a lot of that out there. Yeah, everybody's, you know, got something pretty similar to that. So I was trying to be a little different, a little drawn out, but whatever. You know, when I when I hit you up and asked, asked you know, hey, let's 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 have a let's have a, I wanted to interview you and I wanted to, you know, put it on the channel and stuff. And I had asked you, hey, I don't know your name. I just assumed it was Joe. And you're like, you know, actually. It's not Joe. It's Kenneth. It's like way <laughs> not even close. And I was like, "What is going on?" Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm not Brutus. I'm Kagan. You know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you told me that, and then you uh, you had mentioned what you did for uh, what your current job is, and I was like, "That makes sense." Clash with like GI Joe. I thought it was. I thought it was kind of clever. So uh, tell me about that. You know, I'm, I'm alluding to a little bit about what you do right now. What, what do you do outside of Clash? Uh, I'm actually a, um, operations sergeant for a company at the company level. So, you know, my job is pretty much based on, uh, accountability, um, paperwork, really just kind of paperwork. I've been, I've been in a, a while. So, uh, you know, all the running around and, and shooting things and all that stuff. I don't really do a whole lot of that anymore. Um, I'm fully physically capable of doing it. It's just once you, you know, you get a little bit higher up in rank, you find yourself in positions to where you're. Uh, working for the command and not just doing the training, if that makes any sense. It absolutely does. You know, me being prime military staff sergeant as well. I know not every sergeant does that, but it's, you know, some, some it's very common in mo all, all brands of the military. So what is the branch um, of the military, if you, if you don't mind me sharing, uh, and what places have you traveled by being in the military? Uh, I'm actually active duty army. Um, I have been in Texas. I've been stationed in Texas, uh, Missouri, and Washington State, so Pacific Northwest. P Pacific Northwest, goodness gracious. And I've also been downrange uh, overseas three times. I've uh, got two tours in Iraq and a tour in Afghanistan. What was your What was your um, 
I got to ask the question because you know I've been I've been to those places as well. Mm. What was your uh, initial reaction and feeling? How'd you feel about going to Iraq uh, without without trying to rock like political boats, like legit? Yeah. What did you think about going there? What was that feeling like? Well, I was uh, when I my first time in Iraq, I was 20 years old, so I didn't know anything from anything. You know, I was just doing as I was told. <laughs> it was really like that. It was like uh, you're. You're in the army and you're going to Iraq, and I'm like, okay, because uh, you, <laughs> because you told me to, drill sergeant, you know, like, <laughs> you know, something like that. So um, now the <laughs> the Afghanistan one was a little bit different because I actually had men. I had uh, 12 soldiers, and um, I was in charge of those guys. So and it was a pretty nasty tour. So um, yeah, a lot of thoughts going on there uh, that I'd. Rather not to get too detailed on. Right on. I mean, I've been to, I've been to some of those places. It's um, a lot of things. What I took away from it uh, was, you know, a lot of people. Um, it changes you, and I don't just mean being in the military, being there, just traveling overseas. When you get to basically experience another country, regardless of what circumstance you have to experience it with, the fact that you visit legit another country, like it's not like another state, you, you get an experience there. But when you just get a little whiff, a little little taste of another country, it just it has an effect on you as a human being. What if leaving a, it out, whether it be you know positive or negative, whatever, but. Mm -hmm. That's what it was for me. I mean, it's eye opening is basically what it was like for me. Exactly. And I'm glad. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. And I'm glad that you made it back. Okay. Uh, and we're able to move on with your career and, uh, and be a paper pusher. Oh yeah, certainly. <laughs> why, why not? It just gives me the opportunity to uh, do stuff like this instead. <laughs> yeah, that's right. When did, when did you, um, so just to come for full circle uh, on this, um, you're get, uh, my understanding is you're getting out uh, rather than re, um, staying in for like retirement of it like uh, some people do. Uh, and I also did the same, but did you have any, um, what, what was your plans for outside of the, uh, of the military in your next chapter? Uh, well, I, you know, I, I don't think I ever planned on getting out. Um, I, have, I still have eight years till retirement. I'm gonna try to make it to that point. Um, this right here, the, you know, the channel was really a dream to tell the truth. It was just kind of like one wow. of those, it was just one of those things, you know, like I, after the Afghanistan tour, after the things that I've seen, I said, you know what, I'm going to do everything I can possibly do, um, that I've ever wanted to do. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna let anything hold me back. So, right, right. um, I loved Clash of Clans. I played the mess out of it, man. I mean, I, I, I played so much that I would sit there for, remember when it used to be two hour Bart's, uh, you know, the boost sessions. Yeah. Yeah. So I would sit there every night in front of the TV, watch TV and run two hour boost sessions to work on walls or whatever it was I was doing at the time. So, um, when I, when I applied for, um, Elite Elite Nation, uh, Clash with Ashes Elite Nation. I applied for that, and they said, "Ah, uh, your heroes are a little too low there, bud." And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> what were they when you What were they when you applied for them? Uh, when I applied, Town Hall Eleven had just come out, uh, so I was still a Town Hall Ten with probably level twenty five heroes. So, you know, I didn't know any better. Holy cow! <laughs> yeah, you know, like I didn't know any better. Um, so they were like, Hey, yeah, get them up to level 30 and get back with us. You know? So I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. So I, I, you know, searched like queen walking or a super queen, whatever it was at the time. And, and I did that. I got to level 30 and then, uh, got a little bit of the run around at first, you know, <laughs> to give the guy some crap on this one. You know, I got a little bit of the run around and then I contacted Ash directly. <laughs> it was kind of like, you know, backdooring the boss or whatever, you know? So and uh, so they sent me down to A-Team 2, and um, yeah, you know, they were awesome guys. Uh, got in there and learned, and I was actually really good at queen walking. And so they were like, you know, where did you learn how to do this? You know, because at the time, uh, that was when, like, the modding thing was, like, huge. Everybody's like, oh, you're a modder, you're a modder. No, you're a modder, you know? So it was like, uh, all right, I'll just show you how I'm doing it. And so I started recording it, and that's kind of how the channel got started. So you got into um, Elite Nation before you had the channel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was um, in a team too before the channel even started. Wow. And so and t so you said, you know, this was a dream. How, tell me about that. How was was the channel a dream, or tell me more about, a little bit about that a comment that you made. Um. Well, like I said, you know, when I got back from um, that tour, I, I I seen so many bad things, so many people getting hurt that um, I, I didn't want to limit myself to just being uh, subpar, just doing partial of what I enjoyed doing. So I enjoyed playing the game 
And uh, so once I started recording, people actually started liking, you know, how I was doing. I was kind of, I was kind of mimicking uh, Jake a little bit. I had watched Jake for a while. I watched a lot of Power Bang and I watched a lot of Ash, obviously. And uh, or Jake's early videos where he was like sketching it out and drawing it and stuff. Well, that's yeah, good that, old days. Yeah, the good old days. And that's kind of how I was. I started out, and people were like, "Hey, I like that style." And so then I started doing it more. <clears throat> Anyways, and so really where that kind of went was the Clash Live Chicago. And I did the Goblin Knife video. And um, they actually liked it. Uh, Anushka actually liked it. And uh, so I met her in Chicago, sat down and was talking to her. I met Jake. I met Power Bang. But, you know, they didn't know who the heck I was. They didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, no big deal, whatever. Um so, I mean, obviously Ash knew who I was because I had been, you know, const in constant contact with him. Uh, but Anushka asked me, you know, are you going to keep doing this? And I was like, yeah, why not? You know, and and uh, so that's kind of where it went. I, that's where it kind of got serious was, you know, Supercell, you know, Supercell rep says, hey, are you going to keep doing this? And we, we actually like your stuff. Um, so I said, heck yeah, let's, let's do it. You know? So is that how you got, uh, the non-disclosure, uh, I'll just, I, people refer to it commonly as contracted, but you know, on the non-disclosure form with the super, with the direct, uh, developer supercell so that you have access to the test environment. Um, is that how that started and how you got onto that journey by meeting a, a supercell rep at Chicago live? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how it went. Um, you know, that's, it's, it's actually a blessing to be offered something like that. I mean, as you would know um to be offered something like that and you're kind of skeptical at first you're just like okay what am i getting roped into is there a little bit of right you right, know is there going right. to be some quip pro quo in here or what you know but no it's pretty much straightforward and to the point um they let us know what they want to let us know and uh we put it out when they tell us to put it out you know pretty simple so um and i don't and i choose not to abuse that i mean obviously you being in the military at one time you can understand you know don't don't take advantage of the things the opportunities that you're given you know what I mean? oh absolutely yeah and not even in the military that's just great advice for life you yeah know? yeah yeah exactly yeah well, have you so leading uh that's actually where i'd like to a perfect segue into and build upon what have you used the test environment for uh what is your people let, pretend no one has any idea what it's they've never been in it they've never been in a test environment um what is it any different what have you used it for uh um, um, what do you have do you have any plans something well it's kind of it's only issued uh during um you know during update time frame uh so i mean it's, it's only it's, it's it's just basically the game really it's just a it's a different it's the game with uh you know whatever new is coming out is all it is it's really nothing special it's nothing you know additive or anything like that it's really i mean i i think it's nothing special but that's because i've done it um but really it's just uh take take uh, the the current version of the game and add something to it and say, this is new coming out. All I do is I get to play it. That's really, all. that's all it really boils down to. So um, you don't get to like attack a base with like a thousand hogs. Oh, and just... oh yeah, you can do that. But that's just, it's like a, <laughs> it's a, it's honestly like a mistake. Like it's like a button that you press and then you're like, Oh crap, I got a thousand of each troop. And it's, <laughs> yeah, but but we're not really supposed to do that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would totally be looking for someone like uh, and try to do like a thousand wall breaker raid on them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it is what it is. I I choose not to do it because I I you know since day one on the channel and a lot of the people that watch the channel they know they know me for being straightforward and to the point. And I don't like to fluff them or lie to them. You know what I mean? So something like that's just kind of like, okay, yeah, bro, you're kind of going for views at this point. You know what I mean? So. That's that's kind of what it is, but it's a good time. But right, that's still, that's still pretty freaking cool, though. You know, what's that? I mean, to have that—that's still pretty cool to have that exclusive access, so that you can make content um, that you know tailored for the people that are going to be playing the game. I mean, that is very very cool, and to to have a rep take notice of that so early on. Um, because what would you describe your channel to actually cover? Like, are you, my understanding, cause I've, I've seen you, I've seen you do quite a bit of videos for a, quite a while and I've seen you go, I think from about six or 7,000 subs. Um, but it looked like you have a wide variety of content, you know, like some people only do pushing, some people only do war. So what would you describe your channel to be and where it's heading uh, now in the future? Cause it seems like it's heading towards a specific 
or at least a, a specific branch is opening up to you with some of those uh, opportunities that just came out with the CWL as well? Um, well, so when I first started, it was really kind of trying to uh, reach the casual play, you know, player. But obviously, the casual right. player doesn't really know too much about YouTube anyways. Uh, normally, if a casual player gets on YouTube, they search something and, you know, obviously everybody's going to get out, outpowered by, you know, Galadon or Chief Pat. That's just nature of the beast because of how long they've been around. And probably the first thing that's going to pop up for them is going to be go wipe. I mean, we all know this. Um, so I, I, I enjoy playing multiple accounts. It just keeps it fresh for me. That's really the God's honest truth there is that if I play one account, I'm going to get bored. Uh, that's, that's straight up and honest. I have an 11, I have a 10, and I have a 9, and obviously a, a new 8 that I started working on recently. So uh, really the goal right there is just to max all four of them out. Um, but my main focus right now is the Town Hall 10 because I really, really feel that the game is starting to shift uh, towards Town Hall 10. Uh, Town Hall 9 was the thing for many years. We all know this uh, since its introduction. Um, and it's still a very fun one to play, but I really feel that Town Hall 9 is starting to go towards the Town Hall 8 realm. Yeah, and, couldn't agree more. And I feel that Town Hall 10 is the new Town Hall 9. As much as I, you know, if you had told me that two years ago, I would have said, uh, you're crazy. You know what I mean? But now I really feel that Teslas aren't as big of a threat as they used to be. And I feel that we are looking at uh, the next Town Hall 9. It's It's more challenging. And I really wish I had a maxed out one, but that's why I'm working tirelessly on the one that I have to get it there. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I wouldn't, and I think it's, I would just wanted to point out that you didn't say obsolete, you know, no. to, you just said going the way of time. It's just basically a shift, yeah. uh, but it's still very much uh, important and has its place. Um, but I couldn't agree with you more as far as the desire, the hype, where the, the sweet spot, right? You know, the meta is, it's all about that 10 game, and, and that includes 10v11 and 10v specifically 10v10. That's the only thing everybody pretty much cares about because although it's not truly automatic, you know, Town Hall 11 dips are considered automatic, but in order to enable those 11 on 11s, it's all about that success at, at the Town Hall 10 game. So that's part of the reason as well why I've been focusing on my 10s uh, because of what you just said. I feel like 9s is... You know, for someone that like you and I, we play it all the time, like all the time, and we play it at a specific level, we can say the word easy. And then others that don't, they're like, that's not easy. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree with you. But um, so, no, it, it's easy for a certain few, you know, for a certain percentage. Um, and that percentage is like looking for the next thing. And that is definitely, they're hitting upgrade. They're hitting upgrade on, on their town halls. That's what they're doing. I mean, yeah. I know I did. Yep. Um, so with the channel's direction, uh, obviously we're doing the CWL light content right now. Um, I really just want to get more involved with the community itself, uh, the fair play community. There's a lot of great people out there, um, that are covering this stuff, you know, that's covering the CWL, uh, leagues, uh, streamers, the, the tubers, you know, it's not really about being just me by myself trying to be like this big time YouTuber. None of us would be anywhere without each other. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, a lot of us feed off of each other, whether we think so or not. <laughs> I mean, that's the, you know, that's the truth when it comes down to it. You see a video by, I don't know, let's say Klaus, like, man, that was a really good attack strategy. And then he has like 20,000 views in like three days. And you're like, okay, He's on to something. I need to get on. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get a little taste of that. You know what I mean? But uh, really, the uh, the drive of the channel right now is war related. Uh, I'm certainly going to still do some farming stuff because, but I, I really, honestly, truthfully, only find like two or three strategies that are uh, viable enough to do a video on. Exactly viable to do yeah. a video on because, like, I I can do uh, what was it the one I did recently? I posted for the Town Hall 9.5. Uh, it's a queen charge, whatever. Anyways, uh, so I could queen charge like it's nobody's business. And, and you know, then I get people saying, well, why don't you uh, La Lunion? And I'm like, well, I don't want to spend that kind of dark elixir because I'm trying to get my heroes up. You know what I mean? And Lava Hounds cost an arm and a leg for dark elixirs. So what's the point? You know, so everybody's got their own views and opinions on this. Um, so, I mean, farming is, farming is what it is. Uh, I'll dabble in it a little bit, but I'm really more interested in teaching people how, the, you know, the fundamentals on how to actually attack, especially Town Hall 9. Town Hall 9 is not 
hard at all. But that's because me and you can say that uh, to everybody else. They might think it's extremely difficult still. So if I could point out the easy details like uh, an archer tower not reaching a builder's hut or not reaching a right. barracks, you know what I mean? And that you can place a minion here to take that out instead of wasting uh, two extra housing on a wizard. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So. That's kind of where we're going right now. Uh, we're going to keep giving the CWL love because I feel that the CWL is what's keeping the game fresh right now. So without um, your your full-time job mm -hmm. uh, and without clashing, anything Clash-related, is there anything that you do outside of that for fun? I, I, I know you probably go to the gym. I'll give you that out easy right there. But um, what else do you do besides clashing and just working and paying bills, you know? Um, well, since the channel, that's – basically really it <laughs> i mean you know i've dumped i've dumped so much money into this endeavor i i believe in a professional product i really do i i feel that if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it right um that's why we're current i'm currently in the process of building a pc um i'm gonna use my max for editing and photoshop but the stream and um uh, obs and elgato that's gonna go on a big pc i got uh, a lot of money going into this thing. I'm buying the pieces one by one. Well, actually, I'm stacking the pieces, and I got a guy at work that actually knows how to do it. Uh, so it actually works out really well. He just wants a pizza. Uh, so we're going to get that. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> he just says, I want one of those queen. So we got this thing around here. It's called a queen, the queen pizza. It's like 30 inches of pizza. He, he wants he wants one of those pizzas, and he says, yeah, I'll build the computer for you, no problem. So that That's what friends are for right there. Exactly. So, um, you know, we're going to continue to build and uh, and create a professional product that's the idea here but yeah so it's gym it literally goes like this 4 a.m wake up i go to the gym at five i go to work and do pt again at 6 30 and then i go you know i come to the house grab some coffee change shower and i go back to work at nine and i'm at work till about you know about 4 30 5 o'clock every night and then as soon as i get home it's you know literally um working on a video whether it's thumbnails uh editing posting whatever it is you know what i mean so a lot of my recording goes on saturday and sunday and unless something major comes up i.e uh, update <laughs> right <laughs> you know you spoke about um I, it's funny to hear you say all those things because that's that's a similar path i took like i started um i started recording videos for similar reasons uh basically the tootsie roll bass it doesn't matter why I started, but I started using software that was free, free, a screen recorder, iRec, <laughs> uh, you know, from a, a IO, IEMO, iOS 4, whatever like that, that, you know, stopped working. It was kind of buggy after uh, iOS 8. And so, and like you, you know, I believe in a quality product, so you got to invest on, uh, you know, people are talking about, people ask me all the time, what do you use to record? Elgato, it's a game capturing device, and then there's a software that helps you put it all together, OBS. So, you know, there's a lot of things that people take for granted or don't even know how much work goes into creating a video. And so what advice would you have for those people that ask those questions? Because I know you get them too. What do you use to record? How can I start getting into that? What advice do you have for someone that's interested in starting a channel for similar reasons that you have? Um... Oh my goodness. My advice is, is that <laughs> if you intend on going or embarking on this journey, you know, save your money first and, and do your homework first before you make the mistakes that I have. Um, you know, I thought, um, Apple was the way to go when it came to this stuff. And it's, it is, it is for Photoshop. Oh, it's beautiful. It, it works wonderfully. Um, but you also have to pay for Photoshop. It's either you pay in bulk or you do $20 a month. Um, and then the computers and the Elgato and the lighting if you want to do face cam. And if you want to do like I'm doing right now with this uh, green screen behind me where you can see nothing but a wallpaper behind me. Um, all that stuff adds up. So we're talking easily so far to date. I'm thinking about six, seven thousand dollars already dropped into this. And that's American dollars. Um, so to make a quality product video, the to, stuff that everyone wants to see. Exactly. So, you know, whenever, you know, I see comments where people are trying to dog other people for uh, not commentating or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. Music, music video. You know what I'm talking about? The music video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just put music in the background and let the replays roll. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, those get those are fun and all, but they get <laughs> boring really fast. It's like I'm in a rush video. Like, I can't <laughs> talk. Let's just go. Exactly. So. <laughs> Um, you, you, I would, I, my advice is to reach out, uh, and there are people out there that will help. I mean, I have people ask me all the time and I'll say, um, 
I'll tell them what they need to know, and then I'll say I'll revert them, to, you know, to YouTube. A lot of there's a lot of stuff on YouTube to assist you on getting started. There, I mean, there's so many videos on uh, the yeah. right Elgato to get and the right computer specs to get, and so on and so forth. It's just an, it's crazy. OBS settings and things like that. Exactly. Yeah, that's how I learned. I mean, I, I still get questions all the time from people that ask me, like, how, you know, I, this happened to me with the video. What happened? You know, how did you get past that? So yeah, YouTube teaches you how to do it. That's how I learned how to do. I uh, got a got got it started, especially like streaming, and I still learn by watching other people. But you know, I did want to uh, point out that um, I saw the you never used to always have a green screen. That was something new, and your overlays, um, you know, for the standardization of covering CWL content specifically, uh, light content. I thought those changes because if correct me if I'm wrong, but they're recent and I'm talking like the last six weeks, they never existed. So those decisions, um, I like I like those things, man. It looks has a really poli polished looked about it. Uh, it's very consistent. I mean, I like the direction that you, you took your channel. It's kind of exciting. Um, what do you um, how do you feel now that because you know, people could sign up to to put their name in the hat to cover CWO invite stuff, and I knew already. I, as a as a participant, I already knew how much work was involved as a partic participant. And then people get mad at like, where's the where's the weekly weekly recap for like you know that the power rankings or something? He has to go to thirty two freaking clans, folks. You know that is so much work. Oh, I'm sorry, sixteen. And that is so much work to go through all those clients and still have a life. And you just described that at the beginning of this interview. You know, you had mentioned that you got 11 out of 16 so far. So has it hit you yet just how much more uh, work uh, goes into this? Or could you have fathomed how much work was, wasn't was ready for you when you signed up and put your name in the hat for CWO Light? Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> 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 I, I I went from running uh, four accounts in war, because uh, I love to war. I mean, I like to war Town Hall 10 all the way down to eight. And uh, so I went literally from running all four accounts to maybe two accounts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it literally goes like this. So, uh, you know, the big guy contacted, uh, you know, I did the form. I did the form like everybody else probably or who was yep. interested, who was interested. And when I thought I when I signed up for it, I thought it was going on specifically the uh, web page, you know, the, the, the CWO web, web page, we weren't going to get anything out of it. It wasn't going to go on YouTube or whatever. So, I mean, that right. was, that was some sat, you know, that was some sacrifice to me, but I, I, I live this in the more of a selfless mindset. Uh, it was for the community. So, uh, but it, it actually didn't go actually, you know, it didn't go that way. So, uh, you know, thankfully anyways, uh, it, it starts out Saturday, uh, Saturday. So I get up at, uh, five, six, depending on how I'm feeling on Saturday morning. And I'm like, right. I'm like, dude, I got to go to the grocery store. I got to go, you know, cut the grass. I got to do whatever, you know, I got to get ready for Monday now. So from like five or six in the morning till about noon, I'm like hammering everything out. I'm going to the store, I'm getting a haircut, whatever. And then, so <laughs> about, you know, about one, the, uh, CWL light clans that start their wars a little early because they're on the opposite side of the globe, their wars are normally finishing up and they're contacting me saying, Hey, you ready to go? And I'm like, yes, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, I, yes, I'm ready. I just send me an invite, please. You know? <laughs> so I spend, literally hours i mean we're talking probably from about one or two in the afternoon till about uh, well after we're done with this interview until about one in the morning uh recording and then i got to build the overlays and then the videos end up turning out to be about 30 minutes so um the very first video i did just like power banks because i thought we were going to maintain continuity is what i really thought i kind of we like yeah I, I picked up on yours i liked i liked how you did that i did well i i knew it was going on the cwl uh YouTube channel. And that was really the drive. There was, uh, let's maintain continuity. Let's keep it the same. That way everybody knows that the product is the champions war league. Um, right, right. so that was the intent there, but anyways, um, so yeah, we will build the video on Sunday and, and try to get it live by, you know, 10 AM, 10 30, 11 AM on, uh, Monday is really the intent there because they do, they start asking, Hey, where's the recap? And I'm like, I don't like you very much right now. <laughs> I swear to God, I know for a fact they have no idea how much work goes into those. No. The people that cover the, I, I'll tell you straight up, I didn't put my hat, my name in the hat. Somebody asked me, uh, like, hey, why don't you 
hey, look at this. Why don't you put your name in the hat? Why don't you help out? It'd be kind of cool. And I thought it'd be great for the community as well. But where my head went at it was I didn't want I didn't want to suffer hurting my clan with my attacks, you know? Like I didn't want anything to distract even more so from that. And I just I knew how much work would be involved in order to to, to put out a quality product, which I think you do a great job on. I knew I didn't have the time. So I was like, there's no freaking way I'm putting my name in that hat. And then when I saw when I saw the people that did, I'm like, you guys are brave. <laughs> Absolutely brave. Because you guys already had a lot on your plate to begin with. So when I saw you, you and Pat is what I'm thinking of that I that I know cover like um uh premiere and then light. And I forgive me, I think it's Maxwell that covers like the rising or something like that. Yeah. But yeah. they were they were already well established, heavy workload channels. And so when they <laughs> took on the weekly recaps too, I'm like, you guys are just beast and so thank you so much man i mean i don't think you guys hear that enough on the comment section i know how much work goes into these videos and so if it's not coming if it's not up on monday i don't care thank you for doing it if it comes up on tuesday thank you who cares if it's a day late man yeah yeah so uh to, to um so let's 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 um let's wrap this up with some some softer questions some easy ones here um prior to playing clash of clans did you or you there was one I, I forgot to ask do you ever um did you ever play other video games as competitively as you do clash of clans uh well i i wouldn't consider skyrim and final fantasy as competitive gameplay i i invested oh my goodness skyrim almost ruined my life uh to be honest with you. <laughs> i'm not even gonna lie i i so uh 2011 when skyrim hit i think i put easily 300 hours in the first a month maybe i think it was a little bit more oh, I, I don't remember i i literally got off of work and i would go straight to the tv and turn the xbox on and it was skyrim the rest of the night until the next day so uh i turned it off you know i i deployed is what happened so i went to afghanistan came back and i was like never again i'm never touching an xbox ever again and <laughs> and i didn't i didn't i didn't buy the xbox one i stayed away from it and um so then, you know, this was 2012, so early 2013. So I saw an advertisement for Clash of Clans, and I was just like, oh, another stupid phone game. You know, that's kind of how it went. And <laughs> I downloaded it, and I played it for like a matter of five minutes. And obviously, you, if you if you remember the intro or the tutorial. You're hey, just, Chief. Yeah, hey, Chief. I'm like, this is stupid, you know. <laughs> so I'm like, this is stupid, you know. So anyways, I didn't touch it for like another six months, whatever. And uh, so, so, yeah, so the account was established, but I didn't play it. And then... Hey, Chief. <laughs> Stupid. <Yeah. laughs> so <laughs> so people at work were playing it is what happened. And uh, I didn't really start taking it, taking it serious until I joined a clan called... Uh, chill boys, chill boys. And this was like, er, this was like mid 2013, early 14 or whatever. And so I joined this clan and the clan leader, this guy was like, you know, I hate YouTubers. I'm better than all of them kind of guy. And I was just like, okay, cool, bro. I'm just here to play the game. I don't know anything about this <laughs> stuff, you know, <laughs> like that's how it went. And, um, yeah, I didn't really start taking it serious until I, well, I started taking it serious about 2004. 14 the end of 2014 to 15 um and then i really started taking it serious when i joined elite nation it's just the people that i you know the the the, the people that you play with in these types of uh families there's a uh clan alliance families it's insane um so you just get wrapped up into it and you actually enjoy it more and more and more uh, to the point where you don't want to let anybody down you're actually yeah. planning stuff and sketching and drawing and all kinds of craziness so uh, but yeah, I played Royale briefly. I played Royale briefly. Um, I just not not sipping on that Kool Aid. You're not believing with with Clash with Ash and selling. No, well, I I love Clash with Ash, and, and, and I and he he loves that game. He does. Um, but I just didn't want to be like everybody else. That was my biggest thing. Is I'm like, okay, I started the channel on Clash, you know, Clash of Clans. I've only got like maybe a thousand subscribers when Royale started taking off. And I was like, if I change right now, I'm going to lose everybody and they're all going to hate me for it. So I'm just going to keep powering through, man. That's, that's, that's how it went. What's your favorite Clash memory? My favorite Clash memory? Mm -hmm. um, was there any specific war? Was there a specific moment or achievement that you did? Like, you know, maybe you got 30-30 for the first time and you screenshot it. You're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I want to say when I maxed out my, well, let, let's, let's back that up. So when the Town Hall 11 hit 40-40 and there was no 45-45, that was probably the most epic moment was like, and I did it with a goblin knife and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> did you screenshot it? You? you know I did. I was you like, everybody does. I was like, oh yeah, I maxed out heroes finally. <laughs> <laughs> I swear those are two milestones that everybody screenshots. 30-30 Town Hall 9 and 40-40 uh, Town Hall 10 or 45-45, right? Yeah. For Town Hall 11. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm sitting at 45 and 42 just because I've kind of been like, I need to focus on this Town Hall 10 right now. I need the Town Hall 10 because that's where it's at. You know what I mean? So uh, 11's great and all, but it's really – okay, Let me let me stop from saying that. I, it's really easy <laughs> for, for, for me to attack a town hall 10 it's not that difficult but for others i understand um so i find more interest in using my level 27 queen and level 20 king on the town hall 10 to try to three star town hall 10s that's really <laughs> <laughs> that's more challenging to me so um yeah all right. Well, then, what is your uh, last night? I um, we were supposed to talk you last night, and my wife. I had told you that my wife uh, looped me into a forced date. I didn't want to do it, man. I just want you to know. But, you <laughs> don't, know. don't tell her that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't, she already went to bed. She can't hear this. So, <laughs> um, we watched uh, Beauty and the Beast. It's an awesome freaking movie, by the way. Awesome. Um, it was just a little bit of old, a little bit of new. It was, I just loved it, the new one. So I, I thought that would be a great one, and I, I made fun of SGP last. Time when he cried at the Lion King, but what is your um, what is your favorite Disney movie and why? My fa- uh, favorite Disney movie. It can, yep, can be cartoon or it can be you know if you're uh, all about the Olsen twins, that's fine. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like them clean. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and well fed. Oh, yeah, well, too, too soon. Oh. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Disney. Quickly change the subject. Come on. <laughs> I, all right. So my favorite movie of all time has to be Man on Fire. And I cry like a little girl every single time he dies at the end. Just saying. Uh, Den- Man on Fire? Yeah. Denzel Washington is my hero. I'm, I'm sorry. But that movie gets me every single time. It's old as heck. But... Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go check that one out. I don't think I've seen that one. Man, Man on Fire is an older movie. It was like uh, I want to say early 2000s, maybe late 90s. I can't remember. Anyways, Denzel Washington. Uh, yeah, he's 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 a badass. Really, he, he, I do like Denzel. He's awesome. Yeah, he he plays like especially this, like in Training Day. It, it, awesome. Exactly, exactly. It's like that that feel to it. But he sacrifices his life. Blah blah. blah. So it's amazing. Uh, yeah, you might want to check that one out. I probably will. I probably will. <laughs> Well, um, I think we're just about out that time, and I think that rounded out our last question. Um, is there any shout outs that you want to give before we close this out? Uh, or anything anything that you want to cover, uh, talk about that we haven't covered uh, thus far as well? Well, a special shout out to Wicked for hitting 100,000 subscribers. That's a big, big feat for him. Wow, yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Wicked right? Gaming, right? Yeah, Wicked Gaming just hit 100,000, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you know, Kaya girls powering through with the streams over there, working on elite gaming special, you know, thanks to fog and them over to elite gaming for allowing me to uh, record them every other week and all that stuff. And yeah, man, I appreciate being on your show. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks again. Thanks for taking time um, out of your busy weekend. I know you have a beyond full plate, um, but ho- that'll wrap it up for the brutally honest. And thanks for being so honest with us. Once again, it's going to be Brutus and clash with, Kenny, <laughs> <laughs> reminding you, you got to be better than a double, and we will check you next time.